Before I begin, Ventero Watches has generously agreed to sponsor this video. If you want 15% off on a luxury watch that is beautifully crafted, use the promo code GOLD in the link below. One of the more controversial prospects of the 2019 NFL Draft is Daniel Jones. Jones, who is a 6'5", 221-pound quarterback out of Duke, has gotten various grades when you look across the media. He's one of those guys who some think he's worth a first-round pick, while others think he shouldn't get drafted until the third round. As I went through his film, there were certain things that stood out to me. His ability to step up in the pocket, his usually solid accuracy across the short and intermediate portions of the field, and his rhythm to execute a very mechanical process. He should fit into a West Coast passing offense right away. Take this play against Virginia Tech in the first quarter. It's third and nine, and the Hokies only rush three. They drop into a variation of cover six, with one of their linebackers staying shallow to watch out for the running back. After the snap, the left tackle is immediately bull rushed in the backfield. Instead of panicking, Jones steps up in the pocket, he goes through his reads, and he finds the open receiver by the left sideline. This converts to the first down and allows the Blue Devils to continue their drive. Here's another example from the same game where Jones went through his reads and confidently found his target. He started left, went across the field, and then he threw an accurate pass over a dropping zone defender to pick up the first down. This was another good play that showcased Jones' natural ability to progress through his reads and get to his target. Now, while I think he certainly has potential to be a fulfilled reader, the number of stare downs and force passes into impossible windows was way too high for my liking. He would flash like he did in the past two plays to start the game, but then out of nowhere, he'd make a terrible boneheaded decision. Sometimes you'd have to ask yourself, what the hell was he thinking? This play against Miami came to mind. Out of shotgun, Jones started his reads to his right. He saw that his two outside receivers who were running vertical routes dragged their zone defenders down the field. In his mind, this should have opened the slot receiver for a quick pass underneath. However, the linebacker from the center of the field was waiting there on his hip pocket ready for the pass. You can see the linebacker watching Jones and he was waiting for him to throw the ball. Even with this obvious clue not to throw it, Jones still attempted to fit the pass. This ball should have been picked off and Jones was very lucky that the linebacker dropped it. Another example of his blatant issues with decision making can be seen back in this play against Virginia Tech. On the left, he had a slant and seam route from the outside, while the slot receiver ran an out route towards the sideline. The out route was open pretty much as soon as Jones finished his drop back. He was staring at it, but for some reason he didn't throw it. The guy is wide open, and this should have been an easy first down. Instead, Jones chose to hold onto it for an additional second, all while pumping the ball in his hand, and the quarterback almost made an interception. On this play, you can either argue poor anticipation or bad decision making. Either way, it's honestly just bad. There's no other way to put it. Plays like these last two were way too common. After going through his film, I actually started with the first round grade, but then he kept making errors that made me completely question his judgment. In my opinion, he's one of those quarterbacks that you really want to like, and when things are going his way, he looks amazing, but then disaster strikes and it just leaves you with a poor taste in your mouth. Outside of poor decision making, a common theme that kept reoccurring were inaccurate passes that Jones just completely sailed. If Jones missed a throw, 9 times out of 10, it was because he sailed a pass over the head of his target. This might be due to his follow through where he's short on the ball, but it's something I repeatedly saw as I went through his games. Jones finished the year with a completion percentage of 60%, and I'd say the majority of his misses were due to this issue. Now, another thing that kept also happening were the number of drops that I saw on film. This was a huge issue for Duke all last season. According to Pro Football Focus, Jones' receivers dropped 9.2% of his passes. This is good for the second highest percentage out of all the quarterbacks in this draft. For that reason, here's a special montage of my favorite drops. Moving on, the last thing that I'm going to bring up kind of ties back to his anticipation decision making. Jones doesn't have lead arm strength, and at times he'll sit in the pocket patting the ball before he throws it. He needs to trust that his receiver is going to get open as he waits too long to throw it. Additionally, because he doesn't have the elite arm strength of guys like Mahomes and Josh Allen, this will get him to trouble when he's late getting to his reads. This will open up to deflect the passes, and his poor anticipation will create opportunities for faster defenders in the NFL. When I look at Jones as a prospect, the guy that I think of when I watch his tape is Eli Manning. Now, Manning went first overall back in 2004. I obviously don't think that'll happen for Jones. Jones isn't nearly the same caliber prospect that Manning was. Coming out of Ole Miss, Eli was seen as a complete package. He could read the field, he could comfortably step up in the pocket, 
and he had a knack for making clutch throws all while being about to get hit. These traits and his cerebral-like knowledge of the game made him a very highly sought-after prospect. Looking at Jones, there is definitely some carryover to his game. I think how he steps up in the pocket and how he'll take shots as he throws the ball makes these two players pretty similar. Plus, both Manning and Jones have a nasty habit of forcing balls into impossible windows. While yes, I do think these two players have their similarities, I just don't think Jones processes the game anywhere near as quickly as Eli does. Eli's ability to quickly move through his progressions based on situation is what made him a great quarterback. I just don't think Jones has shown the ability just yet. I also don't think Jones is nearly as clutch as Manning is. I hate to say this, and maybe when we look back at this video in 10 years, I'll get made fun of for this comment, but I honestly see Jones as a poor man's version of Eli. A lot of the bad, but only some of the good. This is why he's not a first round player on my board. Jones definitely has potential, but if I'm investing a first round pick in my quarterback, I want somebody that'll elevate my team. I'm just not confident that Jones can do that. Overall, and to wrap up this video, I gave Jones a late second round grade in this draft. While there are definitely things that I like, such as his ability to navigate the pocket, his short to intermediate accuracy, and his use of his legs to make plays, I just don't know if he'll ever reach the status of a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. In my opinion, Jones needs to be put in the right system, he needs to be surrounded by quality weapons, and he needs to improve on the weaknesses we already discussed if he wants to take the next step in his pro development. As I mentioned at the start of this video, Ventero Watches has generously agreed to sponsor this video. Each of their watches are meticulously crafted and are great value if you're looking for a luxury watch at a reasonable price. They have over 15,000 five-star reviews. They offer six collections for men, four collections for women, and I love that each style has interchangeable straps and colors so it's easy to find a watch that fits your style. Additionally, you can get any watch engraved, so it's the perfect gift if you need something for a special occasion. When I went to unbox the one I ordered, I can immediately tell you that it looked even better in person than on their website. It's a very good looking timepiece. I picked the Cairo series with the nickel oxblood band because I loved its simplicity. Since I typically only wear watches at the office or for formal events, I wanted to pick something that would look good at these occasions. This watch clearly does that. It's the classic watch that you can pair with your navy suit, and I'm very happy with what I received. I highly recommend it, and if you use my promo code GOLD, you can get 15% off on your order. Thank you so much for all of your support for watching my videos. If you want access to my big board, or if you want to see some of my other scouting reports that I've done, make sure you check out my Patreon account as well. Also, you can find me on Twitter at SamuelRGold.